Hello everyone, myself, Mrs. Chetna Patel from LP Savani Group of School. Today, in this particular English English session, we are going to start with Unit Seven, Limbs of India. Now, this particular chapter has three different units. Today, we are going to discuss the first unit. A baker from Goa by Lucio Rodriguez. Okay. Now, before I start with the chapter, I'll give you a brief introduction about the author, Lucio Rodriguez. Lucio Rodriguez, nineteen sixteen to nineteen seventy three, was a great Konkani essayist. He wrote several articles in English. and konkani to various periodicals and magazines he served as a as the visiting professor of folklore at many universities and also as a professor of english in mumbai and goa his essays were posthumously published under the title of soil and soul and konkani folk tales subtle humor and informal narrations are the essential features of his writing fine so this was a brief introduction about the author now before i start i would also like to give you all the brief introduction about what the chapter is right okay so the theme of the story the writer presents a pen portrait of a traditional goan village baker who still has an important place in its society Eld- elders still think fondly of the famous portuguese loaves of bread l o a v e s that is a plural of singular we say loaf and plural loaves the family tradition is still carried on even today by the new generations of bakers or padars in goa bakers were known as padars p a d e r s that was a traditionally they were called as padars even today marriage gifts are meaningless without the sweet bread or the bowl just as a party or a feast loses its charm without a goven bread okay so the last line like a uh, marriage gifts are meaningless without the sweet bread known as bowl so you can imagine how bread is an important part of the goa life okay so even today they play an important role in their day to day life and that is what we are going to discuss in this particular chapter there okay so this is all about the chapter and all and now we will start with the chapter now before we begin we will discuss before you read okay fine now let us begin with the chapter a baker from goa this is a pen portrait of a traditional goan village baker who who still has an important place in the society okay so as i have discussed in the introduction that it is all about how important a baker is in the life of the goan that is a go people of goa okay fine now we'll go with the first paragraph there fine our elders are often heard reminiscing nostalgically about those good old portuguese days the portuguese and their famous loaves of bread okay reminiscing nostalgically means thinking fondly of the past so the people today who are old who are elders and all 
they still think fondly of the past how they used to enjoy and further in the chapter we will see how eagerly they used to wait early in the morning for that sound the third sound where the bakers used to carry a basket full of bread and all okay fine so our elders they often always fondly think of those old portuguese days and their famous loaves of bread loaves that's a plural form singular we write as l o a f so that's a rule f hai to we add v e s when we make it plural form okay those eaters of loaves might have vanished vanished means disappeared but the makers are still there right so what the author is trying to say is this that those eaters means the people who used to enjoy eating those loaves of bread must have disappeared but the people who used to make are still there of course the ancestors are not there but their business is been carried on by their children okay we still have amongst us the mixtures the molders and those who bake the loaves those age old time tested furnace still exist okay so yes now when they fondly remember of the past they also think about the place and the things associated with the bakers there that is they think of the mixtures where used to make the flour and all the molders the huge containers at the same time they also remember the furnace furnace that is the oven the traditional oven where this loaves of bre- bread were been baked there okay so the fire in the furnace has not yet been extinguished what does it mean that means yes the original people may not exist but their business is been carried on by their children there okay so that is what the author is trying to say that means the fire in the furnace it is which was been carried on by their elders is still been carried on by their children there. okay clear till there fine okay now let us continue further the third and the jingle the traditional baker's bamboo heralding his arrival in the morning can still be heard in some places maybe the father is not alive but the son still carries on the family profession these bakers are even today known as padar in goa okay now as i told you in the introduction that though the forefathers may not be alive now okay so the fathers may not be alive but yes their son still carries on their family profession and the bakers were known on rather now also they are known as padar in goa okay you can underline there what do you mean by heralding heralding means announcing you know the vendors how they shout so similarly over here the third and the jingle are the sound been made by the bamboo when you know something falls on the ground the sound which is been produced that is a third okay now why did they carry those bamboo sticks now how this bakers you know they used to carry the basket full of bread and wherever they stood in front of the house they used to keep those baskets on the those bamboo sticks okay so those bamboo sticks when they were put on the ground that was also the sound been produced and it was also the sign that the baker has arrived there okay i hope it's clear till here fine moving further now we are in this particular paragraph lucille odricks have shared some of the childhood experiences okay so that is what we are going to see in the next paragraph during a childhood in goa 
द बेकर यूज टू बी आर फ्रेंड कंपेनियन एंड गाइड ओके ऑल द थ्री मीन्स द सेम ओनली सो द बेकरस वर लाइक अ फ्रेंड दे वर लाइक अ कंपेनियन एंड दे वर ऑल्सो लाइक अ गाइड टू दैम ही यूज टू कम एट लीस्ट ट्वाइस अ डे वंस वैन ही सेट आउट इन द मॉर्निंग ऑन हिज सेलिंग अराउंड and then again when he returned after emptying his huge basket okay set out means to start that is early in the morning okay so this is one of your answer also student which time of the day or which are the two two times when the baker is been found or been seen so the first time is when he set out set out means when he is on his way in the morning he starts his journey that is to sell his loaves of bread during that time and the other time is when he is returning back after emptying his huge basket fine further the jingling thud of his bamboo woke us up from the sleep and we ran to meet and greet him why was it so was it for the love of the loaf not at all okay so as i told you before that the sound the jingling sound or the third sound of the bamboo was a signal that the baker is right in front of your house okay and that is how he used to or rather the children would wake up with the jingling and the third sound of the bamboo there fine so the moment they would hear the third sound they would run to meet him at the same time they would also greet him greet means to wish somebody like good morning okay that is the way fine so and what was the reason behind it it is not uh because they uh it was because of the love for the bread there okay the loaves were brought by some pascain or bastain the maid servant of the house what we longed for were those bread bangles which we chose carefully and sometimes it was a sweet bread of a special make okay now why the children ran it uh, to to the bakers they did not go to bring the bread because that was the job of the maid servant it is the maid servant who were known as pascain or bastain okay so they were the one who would go and bring the loaves of bread but what captivated them or attracted them more was they wanted to have those bread bangles okay which were which they used to choose very carefully and at times also the sweet bread which were made specially for the children there okay so here while doing the chapter you will see that they have some special bread for each and every occasion so it was difficult to depart bread from their lives there okay so you can imagine that how important a baker was in the life of the govan village there fine moving further the baker made his musical entry on the scene with the jang jang sound of his specially made bamboo staff okay so how the people would come to know the arrival of the baker it was due to the sound been made by the bamboo staff one hand supported the basket on his head and the other banged the bamboo on the ground okay uh you must have seen in many villages how the vendors you know when they come to sell the things there so while they were carrying the things in a basket so with one hand they hold the basket and on the other hand they have that stick with the help of which they make the sound to make their presence feel fine so similarly over here the bakers carried bamboo and that is how they banged on the ground to make people aware that he is present there okay he would greet the lady of the house with good morning and then place his basket on the vertical bamboo we kids would be pushed aside with the mild rebuke rebuke 
an expression of disapproval it could be a scolding also and the loaves would be delivered to the servant but we would not give up we would climb a bench or a parapet and peep into the basket somehow i can still recall the typical fragrance of those loaves there okay so yes see the children uh, do not uh, did not have the duty to carry the loaves there it was the lady of the house who would carry the loaves there but the children were very eager to peep into the basket so in spite of scolding from the elders still somehow they managed to you know climb any parapet parapet means uh, it can be a something which is higher okay or uh, like a cliff or something uh, which is at a great height there so somehow they managed to peep into the basket and get that aroma or the fragrance of the freshly baked bread there okay if so if you happen to pass by a bakery you no know, you have that special or the typical aroma of the loaves of bread or a cake or a biscuits and all so similarly over here the children they climbed in spite of getting scolding from the elders just to have that aroma of the or the fragrance of those loaves there okay fine clear till here okay moving further loaves for the elders and the bangles for the children okay so bangles are the ring you know how the bangle no hollow from there like how we have the donut but the bangle bread which are specially made for children okay that is what they so the loaves were there for the elders and the bangles for the children then we did not even care to brush our teeth or wash our mouths properly and why and why should we who would take the trouble of plucking the mango leaf for the toothbrush and why was it necessary at all the tiger never brushes teeth hot tea could wash and clean up everything so nicely after all yes so that's a very kiddish answer we say no sher kabhi muh nahi dhota right so here also similarly they are giving that excuse the moment they received the bread they were very restless okay they couldn't wait to even to brush their teeth saying that tigers never do that okay and they did not have the brush toothbrush like what we have at the present time this plastic ones and what we use it in a modern time during that time they have uh, traditionally they were called as datun you know with the help of which they used to clean their mouth and all and it was a time consuming process during that time so they were so eager to have those bengal bread they they did not want to wash their face wash their mouth at the same time they would say that hot tea could wash and clean up everything nicely and all okay this is what this is the excuse what they gave just because they were so eager to have those bengal bread there okay i hope it's clear till here students fine fine now oral comprehension questions will discuss during the online classes fine okay moving further uh, the next paragraph it's all about the different occasion having different or a special bread there fine this is one of your answer also marriage gifts are meaningless without the sweet bread known as bowl just as a party or a feast loses its charm without bread okay so as i have told you in the introductory paragraph that marriage gifts are incomplete or rather they turn out to be meaningless without the sweet bread which is also gifted to the daughter and which are known as bowl right moving further not enough can be said to show how important a baker can be for a village the lady of the house must prepare sandwiches on the occasion of her daughter's engagement cakes and bolihas bolihas are also 
a type of special bread which are prepared or a must during Christmas. Okay, as well as other festivals. Thus, the presence of the baker's furnace in the village is absolutely essential. So, this is how this particular paragraph gives us the information that the different occasions have a special bread accordingly. Fine. And this is one of your answer also. Okay. Now, talking about the next paragraph. The next paragraph provides us the information about what they were known as or what type of dress did the ancient or rather the old bakers wore and what it, how the dresses have changed in the present time. Fine. So let's do that paragraph there. The baker or the bread seller of those days had a peculiar dress known as kabai. It was a single long frock reaching down to the knees. In our childhood, we saw bakers wearing a shirt and trousers which were shorter than a full length once and longer than a half pant. That means you can talk it about as a three-fourth. Even today, anyone who wears a half pant which reaches just below the knees, invites the comment that he is dressed like a padar. Okay? So, if any baker who would wear a half pen which reaches just below the knees, he is being addressed as a padar. That means he is a baker. But this is how the things or the dressing have changed. So, the older once had a peculiar dress which was known as kabai there. Fine. Now the last paragraph. The baker usually collects his bill at the end of the month. Monthly accounts used to be recorded on, the sum, on some wall in pencil. Baking was indeed a profitable profession in the old days. The baker and his family never starved. He, his family and his servants always looked happy and prosperous. Their plump physic, plump physic means pleasantly fat body. Physic means, you know, the outer appearance was an open testi testimony to this. Testimony means a public statement about the character or a quality. Even today, any person with a jackfruit-like physique appearance is easily compared to a baker. Okay. So, last paragraph is also one of your answer. That shows that we considered as a baking, uh, baking profession would have not earned much. But no, the last paragraph gives us the information that it was a profitable profession even in the olden days and the baker's family as well as his servants had enough. They never starved. Okay. And looking at their physique, one could see. We say na khate pite ghar ke log hai se. Okay. So they were flat and plumpy. That shows that they were happy, satisfied and they earned enough to keep their family happy there okay so this is all about the baker a baker from goa the information about how the profession is been carried out from a very ancient time till date there okay question answers will discuss during the online class thank you